Hey folks, this is Todd Coburn. Just got done working on myself with my morning run and I wanted to work on your education a little bit. What I wanted to do is take a look at some of the concepts that we looked at uh, in the last two lectures and make sure we understand them. Let's start by focusing on my screen over here for a moment. Now, suppose we have a fuselage. The aircraft looks like this. And let's say we take a section cut like this. What we're gonna find is we have a thin skin and we have stringers. Let's say they're hat stringers. Let's say we have our, say our hat stringer looks kind of like this. Let's say this stringer, this is one inch and this is one inch, this is one inch, this is one inch, this is one inch, and all the thicknesses are 0 0.1 inches typically, okay? If we wanted to analyze this, let's say that, we, that we're told that this has an axial load, P, of say a thousand pounds. What would we do? We're gonna need the area, we're gonna calculate the stress. We're gonna pretend that that thousand pounds is applied at the centroid, wherever that centroid is. We're gonna construct our little table. Let's go ahead and number these elements. We'll say, okay, we'll call that one one, and this one, just like this, we'll break it up. So this number is one, this number is two, this number is three, this number is four, this number is five. So element one is got a width, one, two, three, four, five. Element one has a width of, of uh, let's see, since it's one minus point one, that's point nine. So does element five. Element two has a width of point one, Element three has a width of one minus 0.2, which is 0.8. Element four has a width of 0.1. The height of these elements are 0.1, and let's see, what's that one? We went full height, so 1.0, and then 0 0.1, 1.0, 0 0.1. Now, later we're gonna end up calculating all the section properties. We're already gonna imagine that this force is applied right at the centroid of the section. That means no additional moment, no secondary moment pops into being. All we really need then is the area. So we calculate the area of this part, 0 0.9 times 0 0.1, 0 0.1 times 1, 0.8 times 0 0.1, 0 0.1 times 0 0.1, uh, times one, excuse me, and 0 0.9 times 0 0.1. If we add all these up, looks like we got 18, what's that, 26 point 460, is that right? Let's take a look, 0 0.09. Now if you are struggling with that, that's why we have these calculators, 0 0.09, 0 0.1, 0 0.08, 0 0.1, 0 0.09. 0.46, yep, your area then is 0.46. Your stress, and it happens to be a tensile stress, is P over A. That's 1,000 pounds divided by 0 0.460 inches squared. That's going to be 2174 PSI. Now we're going to record this with appropriate sig figs. That way we'll record our answer is 2.17 KSI. Box that answer. Now, then you ask yourself, what uh, is this material good for that? What you're going to do is pull out your handbook. Let's say this is a 70-75 T6 part. Looks like it's sheet. You go to your handbook, pull out 70-75 T6 
sheet, just like this, and uh, just like that. And we'll say, okay, if we have 70, 75 T6 sheet, 0.1 falls between 0.04 and 0.125, B basis allowable, in tension, we're good for FTU, that's 80 KSI. So we say, okay, FTU is 80 KSI. We're gonna assume that these loads, this force is an ultimate load, so we're gonna calculate our margin of safety as 80 KSI divided by 2.17 KSI, but actually we're gonna carry those extra figures minus one. So 80,000 divided by 2173.913 minus one is a margin of safety of 35.8. That margin of safety, anytime we get a margin of safety of about, uh, some people break it off at a 0.25 others, at a higher number. This is a huge margin of safety. This part will not fail in tension. That's all there is to it. If we looked at another idea, if instead we had a stress strain curve for the material like this, where this is the strain and this is the stress, let's say our stress strain curve does this and about like this. If we need to know what's the allowable this, we'd say, well, we have, uh, what do you read whatever this value is? If this is 75 KSI, that means our FTU, 75 KSI. If we read this value here, let's say this comes a 0.15, that means we have 15% elongation. Our ultimate strain, is 0.15. We can take the slope of this by taking any point in the linear range and take this value over this value and calculate our modulus. And if we have no other information, we're gonna assume that our compressive modulus is the same value, unless we see a different one in the back of our handbook. We can also take this slope here, slide it through 0.2% strain, and wherever that hits the curve, that gets us our FTY. These concepts are things you need to understand. Now, remember we had calculated, what did we decide? We decided our tensile strength stress was 2.1739 KSI. If that member had had a length of 20 inches, then we could actually calculate our deflection as PL over AE, which is really the stress, right? P over A is just the stress times L over E, which means we'd have the stress times that 20 inches divided by our modulus, and that would give us what the deflection is. If we wanted the strain, we could have then used that deflection, or we could come to this. Remember, stress equals EE. We could calculate the strain as just our tension stress divided by the modulus of the material. You need to be proficient in all these calculations. Make sense? Enjoy.